such thing as my motor shape. <laughs> of course we're going live now because someone hit the button. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. That's awesome. Hold that to a blink and then it like Yay. Yeah. Hey everybody, we're learning how to go live on with a smooth video. Uh, smooth operator. Yeah, smooth operator, exactly. So here we are at the wonderful facilities of EFI University in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Um, and we are today working on a Project 501, we call it, the Land Speed Racing Streamliner. Um, it is a um, uh, all-wheel drive uh, streamliner. We're gonna try and go 500 miles an hour with it uh, down in uh, Bolivia, Salar de Uyuni, later on this summer. Um, so the car's over here on the chassis dyno so that we can prove out all the systems in the car and then uh, we're gonna take it over to a dry lake and run it and pretty much if nothing's broken by then um, load it in a box and ship it to Bolivia so now that Paul Yaw has had a chance to see my face which I know he hates um, I'm gonna flip this thing around so everybody can see the actual car um, of course I'm gonna have to figure out how to flip it quick. right there we are so this is the machine and it's actually got it's, uh, it's sort of a uh, uh, taxiing trailer if you want. So what happens is that this trailer uh, gets connected to the car anytime you want to take the car somewhere, uh, like even on the salt or dry lake or wherever you're racing, you pick the car up with this machine with these chain hoists and take it wherever you want to go to the starting line or to the pit area or wherever and then drop it on the ground and go make a run and then go run down and pick it up real quick with this trailer machine and take it wherever else you want to take it to. So this is how you transport the car around on the salt or wherever. In this case, we're gonna use it to transport it off of the dyno and um, flip it around the other way and hook the dyno up to the front axle now. We've run the thing on the rear axle yesterday and today. Um, we found the limitation of the 934 CV joint that goes uh, between the engine and the rear differential. Yesterday we broke that off, so we had to have a little bit of a struggle uh, getting a replacement for it. Had somebody drive out from California from the race shop and uh, and grab a new CV. So there is in between all the suspension links here, there is a little CV joint down there somewhere. I can't hardly get my hand down to show you, but anyway, there's a CV in there that connects the output shaft of the transmission to the diff in the rear. And then it has uh, quite a few more um, CVs running down this drive shaft down the other side of the car. So I'm just gonna back around and kind of move to the other side here. I can need to get to the side like a lot because they're of course trying to move the thing while I'm, while I'm trying to be famous on the internet. So um, it's got these giant Gilmer belt drive assemblies that come off of the main drive shaft. Uh, that run these CVs and or side drive shafts that snake all the way down the side of the car to another Gilmer belt drive that goes back to another drive shaft that sticks through with another CV to the front differential which is hiding out in the sha in the shadows beneath that um, that suspension link that goes to the rocker here for the front suspension so um, this thing is, again, all-wheel drive. It's got a what amounts to a differential in both ends of it. It's actually not a differential. It's just a, a bevel gear setup that allows the uh, power to be transmitted to a uh, perpendicular direction of the input shaft. Um, and they're about a one-to-one -one ratio, which, again, this thing uh, is supposed to go 500 miles an hour, so we need almost no gear ratio in it to be able to do that. We have a 9,000 RPM, or probably 10,000 RPM capable Brad Anderson billet uh, Hemi as a, as a power plant. And then a pair of uh, Garrett GT55 turbochargers uh, as the compressors. Uh, obviously a charge air heat exchanger here on the back. That's what this big black tank is here. And it's got a pair of, um, pair of turbo smart blow off valves here on the inlet of the air tank to the intercooler and then there's a couple of fans we've got down here with engine oil coolers to try to cool the engine because since it's solid aluminum there's no way to actually cool the engine off other than with its oil so so that's the, the basic setup it is a methanol engine um, we ran it we just now finished running it after we fixed the CV joint on the dyno 
with a rear axle, so that is uh, 190 kPa, which is about, I don't know, about 13 and a half pounds of boost. Um, and so now we're gonna flip it around and run the front axle and make sure that the front drive line is okay. Uh, and then if it's cool, we'll be able to load her up and, and go try it out at the, uh, at the dry lake and see if we can break it there. And then if we can't break it there, then we can, we can uh, load it up in the container and send it down to Bolivia. So, Ben Strader, what do you think, Ben? I think uh, probably the only reason this project is cool is because you guys are here working and I can just stand around and watch. Right. So, that, so that'll, uh, that'll cost me something because he said I was cool. Anyway, um, so this has a standard Motec M800 engine management system on it, uh, which came with the engine, so that's why it's not got an M1 on it. And it's got a uh, C125 dash display. It's all covered up up here in the driver's compartment. And I can't open it up and show you, of course, because these guys are trying to hoist it up in the air and spin it around and put it back on the dyno. So lack of planning on my part going live, but I, I found an opportunity and Ben reminded me that I hadn't gone live in almost two days, so I needed to get on the internet quickly in order to keep my uh, hero status up. So this is a twin Siemens uh, DECA injector in this fuel rail here. You can't see it, of course, because the chassis rail's in the way. And then it actually has another uh, pneumatically actuated valve that runs a set of uh, Hillborn nozzles for additional fuel when you go over, say, 30 pounds. I don't know that we'll actually, we, we certainly can't run it hard enough on the dyno. The dyno only hold 2,000 horsepower and our, our CV joint will hold less than that apparently. What did we decide this thing had on it for torque yesterday? Uh, 4,900 foot pounds. So. 4,900 foot pounds. So apparently a 934 CV joint won't hold uh, 4,900 foot pounds. Keep in mind that when they rate the dyno, they rate it, for example, this is a 2000, so it's yep. rated at 2000 horsepower at 2000 RPM. Right. So they do that so that they don't overpromise and underdeliver. But the reality is that brake was rated from Fresnel's at the factory for that power level at 96 volts. And the way that mainline builds them, they actually run like 192 volts. So realistically, at 2000, if you have enough current in your building, which I think we do, uh, you could probably do 26 or 2700 horsepower. And the same goes for a 3000, 4000, 5000. So if you're doing ridiculous amounts of power that's what you're going to need right well we tried i tried turning it a little bit up yesterday we made 22 pounds of boost and it made right around 2000 horsepower but the cv was not happy about that it made it two runs and on the third run we went ahead and broke it right in half so we're not going to do that again because we know we'll just waste the thing I um, the, dyno seem very oh, the dyno was unimpressed entirely yeah. <laughs> unimpressed um so we also don't know that we will see that sort of load on the actual dirt or salt because I think it might just spin the tires because we have to run these little skinny uh, skinny land speed tires uh, on both ends of it. So I think we'll end up with wheel spin before we can load it hard enough to break that. Either that or I'm wrong and it'll break it right in half right when we go out to the salt so, or the, uh, well, the salt or the dirt. So anyway, yeah, this is a um, 520 inch again Hemi, Brad Anderson engine. Um, billet aluminum block and heads. It has a B and J, yeah. Oh wow! Hang on, Ben's gonna help me. I've, now I have a production crew. Yep. This Hang on. Is like on production, production, production crew now. All right. This is. A, but now I have to talk really loud because I'm a long way from the mic on the phone. So, um, right. Turbos we already talked about. Those are easy. You can see those. Intercooler we talked about those. You can see that. Um, transmission. It's a B&J planetary transmission, so it's like a Lenko or like an automatic transmission, Turbo 400, except that it's specifically built for racing, like a Lenko transmission is also. Um, and it's kind of a heavy-duty version. They run them in alcohol dragsters and in alcohol funny cars, so obviously they can handle the horsepower and the torque more so than what we're going to make in this car. But anyway, the thing was set up with that transmission. It's a five-speed, um, so there is five gears. So basically, with a one-to-one -one diff ratios, we have between the axle and the engine only the low gear ratio in the transmission to work with as far as getting the car moving and or running it on the dyno. Now the deal is on the dyno, again because we're planning to go 500 miles an hour, we have to run it in low gear because we'll overspeed the dyno if we try to run it in any gear other than low. Flip that thing so, open. Do what? Flip that thing open, show why. Flip it open. Right. So we've got this big ass heavy cast iron wheel, right, and all these pieces of electronics that uh, control it, and obviously spinning that thing at 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 RPM starts to get a lot out of control. So, so that's why we're running it in low gear, which then of course means that we're subjecting the drivetrain to probably more torque than uh, we ought to be. 
um, because I'm trying to get control of the boost and all that stuff, I want to turn the boost up and make sure I have control of it, but the CV joint can't handle it, so that's where we're at. So, so if you guys just rolled the car out, it's going to come back in with the front end on the dyno, and again, we'll see if we can break it that way, and then if we can't do that, then uh, we're going to take it out to to a dry lake in Harump or something like that and make some runs with it there, try to break it there, and if we can't do that, then again, it'll go in the box and go to Bolivia. So that's the uh, that's the long and short of what I'm playing around with today. Um, I think I'm pretty much out of shit to say about it, so if you like the video, please share it. Sharing is caring. My daughter reminds me of that all the time, so <laughs> sharing is caring. Please share it. You can follow me on Instagram, Tuned by Shane T. You can find my Facebook page, Tuned by Shane T. You can follow my personal Facebook page, Shane Tecklenburg, or you can find videos like this on YouTube at Tuned by Shane T. So again, please share. Thank you for watching, and uh, Paul, stuff it right up there, buddy.